Welcome to the Solid Cam University channel. This video's topic is machining multiple turned parts. So what I want to show you in this video is the, the scenario where you basically have a really tiny part. If you were to program it alone, your cycle time would be maybe a few seconds. Uh, so it's, it's probably not worth doing just one part at a time. So how would you program multiple copies of this one part on your mill turn or your lathe? So we're going to do that today. So first, let's open up a solid cam file. I'm just going to go solid cam new, and we'll go to mill turn. So everything you're going to see me do in this video, you could add some of these features already inside SolidWorks, but I'm going to do it just inside the solid cam external file. That way, whatever additional solids, whatever changes I make to the model, uh, only exist on the solid cam side. That way, the original model stays intact, especially if this thing is a washer, there's probably going to be multiple uses of the washer in, um, in design assemblies and that sort of thing. So everything I'm doing here just to get it to be into production programming, uh, I don't want all those solids, all those uh, extra features to show up on the design side. So again, the purpose of solid cam external. So we're going to start by just adding a coordinate system. And I'm just going to use the center of revolution face to put my z-axis as my rotary axis. That's pretty much it. So we've only got the one solid on screen to start, because like I said, we're just going to start right from the SolidWorks model, which is only the single washer. And I'm going to skip over the stock and the target. I'm just going to click on the green check mark to start. Um, at minimum, all you ever need is the coordinate system. So right now, I'm just doing this so I can get out of the definition screen. I want to go to the feature manager, and I want to add additional copies of this washer. My intention here is from a single piece of bar stock, I just want to make a bunch of these, and then with one program, uh, I punch out like maybe five of these things. So let's, uh, let's do that. So I want to use this function up here under the assembly tab, the linear component pattern, but it's going to need a direction to pattern these solids. So the very first thing I need is some sort of line. So I'm just going to go to reference geometry, axis, I'm going to choose this exterior face here, and you can see that it added the axis of that face. Essentially, that is just a line. Okay. Now, let's go to component pattern. I want to choose as my line the axis. That little black arrow there just indicates the direction, so I'm just going to pattern it in the negative Z direction. And I want a spacing of, let's say, 3 eighths. Okay, and then I want, let's say, five of these things. And I just need to tell it which component I'm patterning. And that is just that guy right there. Okay, so typically I would probably space these out with enough spacing between them for my part off tool. Um, I'm actually intending to leave some material on the back side of this when I do the part off so that I can put this on a on a table for grinding later. Uh, again, um, you're trying to do multiple of these. It's production. However, you would actually do this. Um, I'm imagining that we're going to do a part off of these individual pieces. And then when we collect them, we'll just put them on the table and then grind them all at the same time. But for now, we're just setting up multiple solids. So just click on the green check mark. And now I have five of the solids. Now, additionally, I also want to connect the solids. Now, in reality, I just want to punch these out five individual washers. But for the purposes of the programming, purposes of things like stock and target definition, um, I actually need this to be one solid. So I'm going to kind of add a dummy solid to this to connect all of them. So go to Insert Components. I'm just going to say New Part. Click anywhere in the white space. And now I've added just this dummy solid here. If I just right click on it, edit part, I'm inside of the dummy solid, and now I can add things like sketches and solids and that sort of thing. That's basically what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to go to sketch. I want to sketch on the front face of the first washer. Okay. And I want to just make a quick circle. So let's say we'll just say circle, centered. We'll start it about there. Green check mark. I'm not really concerned what the radius or, or the diameter of that circle is because, again, this is kind of just an imaginary solid. Once we get into programming, I'm actually going to just part right off through there. I'm not going to use it for turning or anything like that. It's just something to connect the five individual washers for the purposes of stock and target definition. 
Okay, and just to kind of round that out, I'm just going to add a little bit of an offset on there. Let's say we add a ten thou offset, because again, it just needs to be something small. I'll go to Features, Extrude, and if I just change this to up to Surface, I'll just put it to the back end. Okay, so we have this, this tube that really just connects all of them. So we can imagine that this thing is basically just uh, one piece. Now, let's go back to our definitions. So we'll say stock. Now, with that one thing there, I could just basically choose from that and that. And that kind of gives me um, the stock because I'm using relative to model. So it's looking at the solids that I selected. And if I say something like, you know, uh, in the negative Z direction from the back face, well, that's what that solid in the center was for, just to give me something to do uh, like that. Additionally, I could have actually chosen the first and last washer, and it kind of would have given me the same thing. This is really just the overall envelope that we're working with. I'll click on the green check mark. Now give me my stock profile. I'm not really looking at the numbers, but uh, the stock definition here is the same as you always would have done. So whatever size bar stock you're using, just define it from there. Now, in terms of target, we want to choose all the solids, really. Uh, so I can go and individually select them like I normally would, or I'm just going to use CAD selection, go to the tree, and let's say design model. the pattern, and the connection. So we click Resume. All those solids should pop up. OK, not a problem. We'll just click on We'll just click on them individually. OK, click Show just to confirm. Still missing the centerpiece. There we go. Okay, so now we've got what I'm looking for. Green check mark. And that will uh, that will create the, the target profile. So again, really I'm just looking for some sort of connection between the washers. I'm really not going to use any of this geometry here. I'm just going to use it as a connection. But now that that's all in place, we can start adding tool paths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this guy out. And I'm going to open up one that I've already programmed, just to show you what you can do with these now. OK, so there's our part with the connection, connecting solid. And I have a couple of tool paths here. So I'm imagining I'm doing this out of a single bar stock. I have faced it on the first one. I've turned all of them together. So that'll take care of the OD of all the washers. I've drilled it all the way through. So pretty much the washers are done. They just need to be separated. So with the part off or the cut off toolpath, you can actually set up multiple chains. I did a chain for each front side of the other washers. Um, and then if we take a look at my parameters, I have a zero offset on the right side. So essentially what that tool will do is it'll come down along that line and face it as it's doing a part off of the previous part. And then leaving behind 10 thou or whatever it is I left on this side of the part, I'll just put that on my grinder and grind them all at the same time. So essentially all I've done is drilled and did an OD turning on all the washers. And then with each part off, I'm basically doing a facing operation. And then of course, because there is no last piece, I had to do a last part off operation really just on that last edge there. Now, if we take a look at that in simulation, slow this down. I'm doing a facing operation on the first piece, turning. Okay, drilling, 
and then we'll take a look at the part off. So it's going to go one, two, three, four, five. So each one of those pieces will fall off as I do the part off. Now let's take a look at if you had maybe more advanced operations, something that you, the tool might be in the way if you tried to, um, let me just get to that point. So let's say we step through the code. That one washer is done. Let's say the second washer is done. Those actually would not be still floating in space. Those would actually fall off into a part catcher or just maybe into the table for collection later. But in terms of our programming, they're still in the way. So how would you handle that? Well, we've seen in a previous, previous video, we have this little stock split button here. Um, let me just bring this over here. So it shows us the individual solids that are sitting on screen. So really, I want it to kind of look like this. I want it to show that the parts have fallen off. So I'm just going to take these two, delete them, and that is only deleting them from our simulation. Now we can see that they're, they've been removed. I'll step through this again. That part's gone. And I can do the same thing again. Now, how this comes in handy is if we have to do, let's say, um, a little more complex operations. Let's say I needed to do an engraving. So let me just open that up, show the engraving I need to do there. So in this scenario, basically what I'm doing is I'm going to engrave, part off, engrave, part off. So let's say I just needed to do those two. Okay, so let me just suppress these guys. Let's add a quick engraving. Okay, and this is kind of a review of the engraving operation. So we'll say text, hover over there, there's my text. Okay, and you can see that it turns that all into individual chains. Let's just grab something really quick. I'll say, let's just grab a center drill, number two center drill, check that it's mounted in Z, that's good. Okay, and let's do this quick. So we'll say upper level is this guy right here, and depth we'll say is only 2,000. Center, and done. Okay, so then we've done that. Let's add a quick cutoff. And again, like I said, we're just going to basically choose that guy right there. Modify geometry. Auto extend to the top of the stock. The bottom, because I added that little connection line, it's stopping right there. I could do auto extend to the end of the stock, but I want to go a little further to make sure I actually fully do a part off and fully finish that phase. So I'm just going to put 100 thou extension tool will be my previous tool too. Okay, and then technology we're just going to say right side. Okay, so similar to what I had before, I'm just going to break them up into separate operations rather than having all the geometry done all the part offs in one operation like I did over here, I'm actually just going to do it one at a time. That way I can do an engraving and a part off, an engraving and a part off. Now, at this point, we don't, we do not have the ability to, to do a transform. So that's basically why we have to do it like this. I'm just going to open this guy up. And with the save and copy, I basically now have the ability to just reselect geometry. So again, we'll just do this one guy here as an example. Okay, levels. We've got our new level is this guy here. And from there, we'll do two thou. Okay. And then this guy right here, I'm going to give it new geometry. In this case, it'll be this one. Okay, auto extend, and then at the end, we'll say 100 thou. Okay, so 
Let's see how that works now. Okay, so we've done an engraving. Now we're going to do part off, and that guy's still floating in space. So if I were to play this through, it would tell me that there's a collision. So again, this guy right here, we just choose the one we want to leave on screen and delete the one that we don't want on screen. So let's delete that guy there, exit out of that, and now we can proceed. So we'll do the next one. Okay, so we've engraved, we'll do another part off, and that's it. So you can actually just copy and paste, leapfrogging them over, and you can eliminate the solids as you go along. Or knowing that you've programmed it a certain way, if it gives you any kind of collision warnings, you can ignore them. But basically, if you wanted to remove the solids, you can use that stock splitting option. So this is a good way to handle multiple small parts, multiple turn parts um, uh, in, a, uh, in a turning program. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCam, you can always give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your questions via the ticket system at SolidCamSupport.com or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.